Hey everyone, this is Caroline. So today I'm going to show you how I do a macro edit using um, a vintage lens. This is the Canon 0.95 50mm from the 1960s. It's on my Sony a7S and um, basically it's just a, a leaf image in the middle of winter. Really rather boring, but I love how the bokeh appears to be almost water-like with this particular lens at 0.95. And I'm going to show how I enhance that with color theory. Right now the image is very boring. It's just gray and a little bit of brown and maybe a little yellow. But nothing that makes anything stand out or seem very dramatic. So when I look at the color wheel, I'm, I know that the leaf falls somewhere in here. So I wanted to pick the opposite color. So I'm going to go somewhere in this area uh, to offset the color and really make this, this yellow-orange pop. Okay, um, so then the first thing that I want to do is is set up my, my image, and I'm going to work through the panels like I would work through them. I tend to bounce back and forth. In my class, Communicating with Color and Light, I talk about the flat edit. I'm going to do a modified version of that, and basically what it is is it gives me room to move. It gives me room to do things with other panels. Um, the contrast here, I mean, it's a well-exposed image. The histogram looks pretty good. Nothing um, that I would change necessarily, but... I want to get some some quite creative with the curves panel and I can't do that if I leave it like this. So what I'm going to do is just quickly bring down the highlights, open the shadows, lower the whites, open the blacks. And this is just a quick move that I do. I have a preset that does this and it just flattens it out a little bit. It kind of moves the histogram to the middle a bit. This gives me the room that I need to move. Um, I'm going to do up some clarity. Um, this part here lets me move the clarity over probably more than I would otherwise. All right, so now the tone curve. This is where things get kind of funky. Um, you have to remember that the tone curve is fine, um, just as it is. I mean, you can just use a simple S curve here, but I'm going to get creative here, and I'm, I'm going to do less talking and more moving and just kind of show you what I'm, I'm thinking. I'm going to do an S curve on this. And pull this down, and I'm just sort of freehanding it. And I know that my leaf is in the highlights, so I'm keeping that up high. Okay, maybe bring that up. Maybe bring this over. I'm. This is what I call drawing the curve, and it just takes time. Okay. I'm going to leave it there, and now I'm going to go to blue, and I'm kind of going to do the same thing. And going down adds yellow, going up adds blue. And let's go here. Maybe there. And because I'm freehanding it, it's going to be different every time. It's not going to be the same. That adds yellow. Maybe I'll go down to, to enhance the leaf. Okay. Let me go back into the red here. I think I can be a little more dramatic with it. Okay. Right there, it looks pretty good. All right, so I've mastered the colors a little bit. Now I'm going to go to the regular RGB and just give a, a hint of intensi intensify it a little bit here. There. Okay, so there I have the colors more or less opposite. Uh, if you look at the color wheel again, I've chosen sort of some blue-greens and some yellows. Now I'm going to go to the HSL panel, and I want to enhance this leaf. And I'm pretty sure it's orange, so I'm going to move the orange saturation over. And I'm going to see what the blue saturation does. Okay, I don't like what that does at all. Maybe I'll bring some saturation out. The purple, there's, there's some colors in the bokeh here that I'm not entirely in love with. Um, I can use my tat tool to just isolate it, and it says it's blue. It says it's not pink. It might be an optical illusion. So I might just leave that alone. Um, hue, I can see how the different colors change things, and I'm not seeing a whole lot of change. But the blue, maybe I'll go that way with it. it see how the bokeh turns sort of magenta, and now if I pull it over here, it takes it out. I like that better. All right, so to, to finish up this edit, 
I'm going to um, use a plugin. So I'm going to put back my tat tool. And as you'll see, uh, so I use the basic, the tone curve, and the HSL uh, to do this. Now I'm going to go right click and I'm going to go edit in Topaz Glow. And I'm just going to choose JPEG and sRGB and let it open. And I'm just letting it run. Okay. Uh, Topaz Glow is a really fun uh, plugin that I really like. And I use it a lot. I use it a lot at a very low opacity. So let's get this full screen. And this is called Leaves of Saturation. It's a preset I made. Now this looks nuts, right? It, do it doesn't look at all like anything that, that you'd want to probably use. Um, but I just take the saturation down. And when you click on and off of it, you can see that it just enhances the saturation, and it, this is without, and this is with, and it just gives it a little kick in the butt, <laughs> um, but not much. It just outlines and defines. So let me open this back up to full size. You can hardly tell, but it just gives it this little something something that, that I think is, is, is perfect for definition. I'm going to hit OK. and let it let it render and there we are back in Lightroom with uh, the, the final and if you zoom in you can't really tell that I did anything it just gives the the overall bokeh a little more punch <clears throat> excuse me a little bit more kick and so then I can just just finish up I might lower the white balance a, a hair to enhance the blue tone and you know that's it and and I'm done so here's the before Oops, that is not the before. Let me go back to this one and hit reset. That's the before, and this is after. Uh, before, very flat and boring, and after. So thanks. Bye-bye.